finding an apartment in under two weeks? Paris could never. And I'm a French woman living in Bangkok, Thailand. So I have taken my damn time making this video because I've actually been living in this apartment for two months. And yes, I'm kind of spoiling the end of the video, but you know what? I wasn't about to go film this video on the street. The process. So one thing I kind of regretted not doing before I left Paris was already start my list of potential apartments that I could visit once I got there. I got a really good website from a Thai friend that I met on a language exchange app a year prior to coming here, which is called Tandem. And she recommended me this site called Red Hub that actual Thai people use. But since I didn't know what to expect, I waited to actually be in Thailand before starting to do my list and choose the apartments that I wanted to visit. Which which means that I actually spent most of my first two weeks there just browsing the sites. I actually think I've spent more than 15 or 20 hours on that site alone in the first two weeks there. And it did help me go through a lot of potential apartments and only select the ones that I wanted to visit. But it also means that I didn't do much for my first two weeks here except just browse the website and visit apartments. But now that I think about it, my two last weeks in Paris were also very busy with packing and saying goodbye to my my family and friends so I don't think I would have started the list anyway my conditions so my conditions were pretty simple but very specific firstly I needed a furnished apartment obviously I'm just moving here for a year I'm not gonna go buy a couch a bed all of this shit this is gonna be way too expensive for me and this is something that can be hard to find in Paris but here thankfully is very common Secondly, since it's already a furnished apartment, it needs to be somewhat cute or at least have the potential to become cute once I decorate it. And believe me, this criteria alone eliminated most of the apartments I saw on the website. Thirdly, the apartment needed to be 10 minutes or less from a BTS station by foot. A lot of my Thai friends didn't quite get it because they take motorbike taxis and regular taxis all the time, but I'm European. I like to walk and I don't like relying on taxis, especially since the costs would add up. If I need to take a motorcycle taxi to go from my home to the BTS station every day, then from the BTS station to my home, this cost is gonna just add up and can become a lot even though transport can be very cheap here. Walking though is free. For I wanted the rent to be between 6,000 and 10,000 baht a month, which is between 200 and 300 euros. Five, I needed a lift because I wasn't about to get all of my heavy luggage from the stairs. If you've watched my video on my first week of Thailand that was hell, you will understand why. <laughs> The hurdles. So while renting an apartment in Bangkok is approximately a million times easier than in Paris, I still face some hurdles. Firstly, I had an apartment I wanted to visit just flat out tell me that they don't want foreigners there, which is fine, but it kind of hurt a bit, not gonna lie. I feel like it's only in Asia that landlords can pull that shit off like openly, because I feel like in Paris that shit is kind of illegal, at least to say it openly. Also, as I said, I wanted a walkable apartment from a BTS station, since it's my main mode of transportation and much cheaper than taking a taxi every day. Yet that was actually really hard to find. Even though Red Hub has the option to select the BTS station that you want to live close to, I eliminated most of the apartments I saw on the website because I looked up their address and saw that they were like 20, 30 minutes away from the closest BTS station. So keep that in mind if you want to rent here too, like really look at the BTS stations. And also very subjective, but most of the apartments I saw were just decorated so ugly. That truly eliminated most of the apartments. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> the eat. Now though, something that really blew me away was how easy it was to schedule an apartment visit here in Thailand. I just added the line ID of the apartment complex given on Rent Hub, told the people working there that I wanted to visit, and it was just that easy. My first visit was scheduled less than 24 hours in advance, and I could have gone that same day. Once again, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but Paris could never. Apartment one. So as I said, I literally scheduled my apartment visit the day before and went there by taxi, which was kind of a mistake, but I'll touch up on that later. 
The first apartment was located in Saturn, which is a very popular area to live in. And it was located near the MRT station, Klong Thai. So this residence was located near a bridge that I'm pretty sure led to the highway. So it was in a pretty dark, underexposed area. It seems that there was no lift because the guy who took me there took me there by stairs, which was already a bit worrying. The size was pretty small with only 20 square meters, which polos is 10 meters square less than the apartment I live in now. The internet was 350 baht per month, and I sadly didn't take note of the electricity and water bill, which might have been free, but I really doubt it because this shit is never free here. Overall, the apartment was okay, but it didn't quite look like the pictures I saw on the websites. So I think they showed me a room that was just less good. Also, once I got to talk with the woman in charge of the building, she told me that because I only had a tourist visa of three months, which if you've watched my whole video of the process of moving to Thailand, really wasn't by choice. So because of that, they wouldn't charge me the 8,000 baht that were advertised on the website, but 9,500 baht, which kind of soured the mood for me as I felt like it wasn't worth it for such a small apartment and not located in the best area. So I left and told them I would call them back, which I didn't do. <laughs> but then the final straw sealed the deal. I walked back to the MRT because once again, walkability was really important for me. And thank goodness I did that because I had to walk under the creepiest bridge to go there. And that just fully convinced me that this was not the apartment for me. I did keep it as a plan B just in case like I couldn't find anything better because it was still pretty okay, but I'm so glad I didn't choose that apartment because that bridge was too creepy, the rent was too high, and I don't even use the MRT that often, so I much prefer being near a BTS station. Apartment two. So the second apartment I visited is, spoiler alert, the one I chose. So I can't go into as much detail because I literally just don't want people to know where exactly I live. But this apartment actually jumped out at me from the website immediately because of its light color palette inside of white and beige. I thought there was a lot of potential to decorate it with fun colors and really make it fit my really bright and colorful aesthetic. And that's why I decided to visit it even though it seemed a bit far for me because it's not really sensitive central to Bangkok but more on the east of the city which is funny because in Paris I also live in the east of the city <laughs> so I got there by BTS and then walked around 10 minutes in the neighborhood which was full of street vendors and just lots of colors which already gave me a really warm and welcoming idea of the neighborhood I just really prefer colorful and densely populated areas because after all I am a born and raised city girl <laughs> once I arrived at the apartment complex I waited in its coffee shop which was already a step up from the first apartment complex and then a very professional lady came to greet me. The apartment complex also has a small gym and a small pool which I have yet to visit, I know. <laughs> but the idea of sharing a small pool with my neighbors who I don't even know kind of freaks me out. But anyways, once I got up to visit the apartment, I immediately loved it. One of my favorite features on top of it being a pretty big studio and this space being cut off in a few different spaces that make it feel bigger once you live in it are the two big windows that let in a lot of light. I know it might not seem like it because I'm filming very late before the sunset but I promise usually my apartment is filled with sunlight. The only problem with this apartment is that they offered only a one-year contract which can be a big hurdle when searching for an apartment as a foreigner who's only there for a few months but since I knew that I would stay a year no matter what it didn't change much for me. The rent was also cheaper than the other apartment with only 8,000 baht, which is a blessing seeing how much I pay in electricity. So I overall left this visit quite happy, but a bit stressed because the lady told me that this was the last studio apartment and it would be rented very fast, so I needed to make my chores super quickly. But since it was only the second apartment I had visited, I wanted to see others. Apartment 3. So I almost gave up on apartment 3 before visiting it because it was so far. It literally took me an hour and a half to get there from the city center. It was near the Icon Seyam Mall, which is very, very far. And I also have very bad memories associated too because this is where I got stranded for four hours in the night on New Year's Eve with my best friend three years ago, which yes, I should make a video about. I, I think I will make a video on my craziest adventures in Thailand. I just, I have, I already have two that could make like a full ass video already. I'm waiting for a third one. 
I also then had to walk a lot to find the apartment that was just in this small alley that looked a bit cheap I guess and then I walked into the building which looked more like a hostel I was greeted by a nice guy who made me go up so many flights of stairs and so this place was already double disqualified for being super far and having no lift. The room was okay also not identical to the pictures and very small. The kitchen was not furnished at all and there was just one random microwave just sitting there on one floor and it wasn't even the floor I was gonna get in which again no. So I left this apartment kind of feeling like I wasted my time to be honest but it also helped consolidate the fact that I really loved the second apartment. Apartment 4 and all of the others. Now what I haven't talked about in this video yet is all of the apartments that I already visited on Red Hub and got disqualified because it had a virtual visit feature that was very helpful. But again, most of them ended up being disqualified because of their location being too far from the station or simply being ugly. <laughs> and after the first three visits, we were approaching the end of my second week here in Bangkok. And I had given myself two weeks to find an apartment, mostly because even my cheap hotel was like more expensive than renting. And also because the start of June was right around the corner and it's better to start renting at the beginning of the month. And also I I absolutely hated living out of my suitcase. I, I am actually a pretty organized person so I like having my stuff put in like specific places. So on the Saturday of my second week I tried, the keyword being try, to visit one last apartment. That was in the Payatai neighborhood which is pretty good because it is pretty central. When I arrived to the station though getting to the apartment was really an adventure and I so wish I had taken videos and pictures because I had to walk through the smallest alley and an outdoor market and it looks so Thai. <laughs> I feel like from a tourist standpoint that area was like just so cool because you'd never see that kind of stuff in Europe but from a, like a living standpoint just going to this all of these alleys just passing by people who live there and like they can clearly see me from their houses too much too much. So I finally arrived after a long ass while uh, to where it was indicated on Google Maps in this small kind of creepy alley and it was closed. There was a sort of hallway with like a metal gate that just prevented me from entering and no matter how much I rang the bell, no one answered. It looked like abandoned, to be honest. So I just left and at first I was really, really uh, bummed about it because I was like, oh my God, I still have no apartment. And then I realized that my heart and my brain and my mind everything was going back to the second apartment so I decided to text them to ask them if the apartment was still available but to be honest I was convinced that the apartment was already gone and rented to someone else but thankfully the lady told me that it was still available and that I could come by the next day to sign the papers and like make it official and then move in two days later and finally my anxiety was completely gone and I actually went clubbing for the first time in Bangkok that night to celebrate and it was an amazing night. So to conclude, do I regret my choice? Should I have taken more time to choose? Should I have started looking at apartments from friends? Well, my answer is no. I actually really love my neighborhood. Sure, it does take me a bit of time to go to the other side of the city, but I don't do that every day anyway. And apart from that, I'm very close to a lot of major BTS stations. And even better, my neighborhood has everything I could ever need anyway. I'm near not one, but two huge supermarkets, three outdoors food markets, three malls as well and I'm near the BTS and I also just love my apartment and building so I'm super happy here and honestly I don't regret my choice even one second it's funny because one of my main character traits if you will being an INFP is to idealize everything and to say I didn't idealize coming here to live in Thailand would be a flat-out lie but frankly while not all of my expectations have been matched perfectly I gotta say that I'm having more fun than I thought I would and I really don't regret taking the leap. As for you, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time and have a great day.